Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with random reviews. I think we're up to number seven of these, but it's like Thanksgiving weekend, and so we're having a good time unpacking and talking about stuff. And I just opened a big box. It's right down there, and it has boxed sets, and I have no idea which ones they are. So I'm going to pull a few out. So bear with me. I'm getting one of them right now. Let's see what this is. Oh my goodness, it's dusty. Ugh, disgusting. All right. So it's dusty and disgusting. And it has... It's dust. It's horrible. Scarlatti! The old Scarlatti box. Complete Sonatas with Scott Ross. You have to hang on a minute. I have to go get something. There's got to be something here I can wipe it with. Yeah, I'll do it afterwards. It's okay. Okay. It's, ugh. Oh, God. All right. So here it is. Um, all these things, and one of them is, is like turned funny, which of course makes me crazy because I'm totally obsessive compulsive, and the fact that it's upside down is enormously frustrating. Okay, there we go. Demen, Demen, no, no, Domenica Sklensky. <coughs> yeah, dust, right? And here it is. You see, it's supposed to say Domenico Scarlatti. And they're like all out of order. So I'm going to have to put them all back in order before I put it away or else I'll have a nervous breakdown. This was, as you know, um, one of the, the monuments of Baroque music, the complete Scarlatti Sonatas, all 555 of them, magnificently played and recorded by the late Scott Ross, who was a brilliant, brilliant keyboard artist who passed away untimely from AIDS. It was really a, a terrible loss to music. It's magnificent, and it's been reboxed in a much slimmer, smaller format, and it's still, uh, well, there aren't that many. There are a couple other sonatas in the works, and there's the very, very good one on Brilliant Classics with, um, who was it, Peter Jan Belder or Jan Peter Belder? I, I, I'm sorry, you're, he's going to kill me, but, I, you know, I just don't remember names very well, but they're very good, too. Uh, and, uh, but this one, this one was the one, I have to say, and it still is. Um, it's magnificent, and it, fortunately it has been in and out of print, but generally available for a very, very long time. And I remember how exciting it was when this sucker showed up. I mean, you know, it originally had, and I still have somewhere, a book. But the book was, was wrapped around the top of the box and just laid on top. And it was a fabulous guide to all the sonatas, including a key that told you like what they have in common and what their characteristics were. It was fabulous. And it immediately got lost. And it also didn't weather terribly well. It wasn't printed on acid-free paper, so it's turned brown and yellow and scrunchy. It's disgusting. So let's go look for another box, shall we? Uh, because, we, oh, oh, here's one. Wait a minute. Let's see, what is this? Oh, wow. This is the earlier... Korean, I think it was, Sony George Cell edition. See the dust? Oh, God. It's... Uh, okay. This is the earlier George Cell edition. This was, this was not nearly, nearly complete. Um, it, it was the same as sort of the Japanese Sony Cell edition, only, only it's like in a box. And it may even be from, from Japan. It's from Japan or Korea. Made in Korea. Yeah. This is the Korean one. Um, and, you know, re remember that all of us, you know, Zell lovers, and who isn't, who is any sanity or musicality, we were all despairing of ever seeing a big cell box. So we spent piles of money on Japanese, the HMV Japan site and all those Japanese import CD sites looking for cell stuff. And there was, there was the single discs on Sony, which also actually at one point got packaged up, in a, which I think I have somewhere else. I may have another one somewhere. I think I do. Um, or I took them out. Anyway, I had them. And then there was this Korean box that showed up, which, like I said, I mean, isn't nearly complete, although it's more complete than it looks because uh, the, the discs have been recoupled in a, a CD-friendly way, which means there's a lot more music, whereas when Sony put out the big cell box, they did sort of original issue stuff, which meant very, very short playing times quite often, and original jackets and all that stuff. But this is nothing like that. Um, what you get, let me see if I could open it here. I don't know, it doesn't even want to open anymore. It's so frustrated. Yeah, oh, okay. So you get just like these... These, these, little, these little tchotchkes, little slim things. 
But they're all recoupled, so there's actually quite a bit of music in here. And it's it has 49 CDs, and you do get the live in Tokyo recordings. Yay! With the Sibelius II and the Mozart G minor symphony. And so there's this is really pretty, pretty good. And um, it, it's, it's more complete, like I said, than you think it is. I kind of try to touch it without getting dust all over myself. Ugh. Yeah, okay. So there's the other cell box, which is just essentially wonderful. And I won't get rid of it ever. I don't care how many duplicates I have, you know. So there's that. And let's see what else we have here. This looks interesting. Oh, okay. I really nice that the complete Rachmaninoff piano music with Edel Barrett and the Polish National Radio Symphony Orchestra and Antony Witt, 10 CDs on Naxos. This is a very, I mean, she's a good pianist. I mean, my word, Edel Barrett's really fine. Now, she has now taken control of her own legacy and she has put out this enormous, enormous box of over 100 CDs, which is somewhere in one of these boxes. I have that too at some place. But she did like to complete almost everything um, on Naxos, a lot of stuff. Some of it was superb. Some of it was quite iffy. I mean, it was very inconsistent. It depended on, especially the orchestral stuff, who she's with. But here she's got Antony Vitt. It's really very, very fine Rachmaninoff. And, and nobody really talks about it, but the, the, she's got the chops. And, you know, there are certain, obviously, there are certain pieces that, you know, well, what can you say? Everyone's going to have their favorite versions of the preludes. And there's the complete Ashkenazi set. There's, there's a lot of them now, right? Rachmaninoff piano music sets, and, and everyone has their pluses and minuses. But on the whole, she's very, very good in this music. And I have to say, I don't know if this is still available, but at the time, you know, I mean, those other things were like full price and very expensive. And this was a real deal. And especially in the orchestral stuff, you got really beautiful performances that were well recorded. And I, I mean, in the concerti, she's as good as Ashkenazi, I think, as often as not. I mean, she's not like Earl Wilde which is amazing, or Zoltan Kochis, which is amazing. But she's very, 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 very good. And her her etude tableau, or first class, and a lot of the stuff in here is very, very fine. Um, so there you go. There's box number three, Rachmaninoff. And this goes, all this stuff goes to the rack here. I got this big empty shelf there. See, that it has one little thing. The complete Rossini overtures on Naxos are there. I have them as singles too. And this box hasn't even been opened. But I just can't, you know, bear to part with it yet. Maybe we'll get there. So keep on listening, friends. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm going to go get like a nice wet paper towel and, and wipe everything off here. So, yeah. Take care.